This was life-changing for me. I didn't know if I would ever get any of my life back. I'm Rose Madrid Sweatman. I am the Northwest Regional Leader for Vineyard USA. I'm an adjunct professor here at the Seattle School. I teach leadership and I'm part of the Resilient Leaders Project in the role of moderator. In May of 2015, I was the lead pastor of a local church here in the area and we were discerning a different sort of track that we felt the invitation of the Spirit to go on when um, we went into a time of great turmoil. Uh, there was a lot of betrayal uh, from people that were very close to me and it just sent myself and our church into a year of absolute stress and chaos. From May of 2015 till January of 2016, it was unrelenting everyday stress. So in April of 2016, I landed in the hospital barely able to breathe, wondering what was wrong with me when they discovered that half of my heart was gone. The stress of that nine months had caused uh, arrhythmias in my heart to where I lost the upper left chamber and lower left chamber of my heart. So at the point that I landed in the hospital, it wasn't something that they could do bypass surgery or stents. It was m my heart muscle, half of it was gone. They diagnosed me with congestive heart failure um, and a diagnosis of broken heart syndrome. I mean, they basically told me, you can't run, you can't do anything that will put stress on your heart because your heart can't take it, it's very weak. So my cardiologist disabled me from pastoring, said I could not do anything that would put stress on my heart. My function was so low, I lost all concentration. I couldn't watch TV, I couldn't watch a movie, I couldn't read. So in that time of recovery, my practice became coloring. I never colored since I was a little girl, and someone brought me adult coloring books and pencils and pens. So I began to color like four to six hours a day. I had dear friends that listened to me cry and rant and cry and rant and have a really good therapist. And I remember asking him, how am I gonna know when I'm getting past the trauma of all that's happened, both to the church, to me, to my body? And this was his advice. He said, when the shit of what you went through turns into fertilizer for new life, you know you're getting beyond it. You're gonna be able to tell the story without being enraged. That'll be a sign to you. You'll be able to tell the story without sobbing. It always is gonna be sad because there was so much loss, but you won't be sobbing. Well, as the months went by, every two months I would go in for an echocardiogram and every time I went in, I improved a little more. And when I got to 35%, my cardiologists were like, unbelievable. We really did not think this was possible. And my husband said, well, what do you, what do you attribute it to? And he said, I, I can't. So whatever you're doing, just keep doing, because you're doing well. And so in August of 2017, I went in for, I'd had a whole bunch of prayer and I felt something shift in my body. I really did. And I went in, had an echocardiogram. Basically my heart was at 55%, which is really quite miraculous for my condition. I think resilience for me has always been having a community of people around me that will tell me the truth that will love me and hold me accountable to who I say I want to be, who I say God's created me to be. You know, starting with my husband and then out from there, you know, peers, therapists, spiritual directors. So a community of people speaking into my life has been a, a staple from the very beginning. The first thing that points to resilience is grounding myself in the love of God. I had no idea if I would ever have a life again, that if I would, my life was pretty much over and discerning if I only have 20% heart function and can barely have energy to do anything, what will my life be about? But even in that, I, I had hope. So for me, that's the starting place of resilience is, yeah, did I have questions? Like, God, how did you let this happen? Did I get mad at God? Like, oh my gosh, yes. But underneath all of that was a deep knowing, sort of like the psalmist, like ranting, and then at the end saying, 
but yet I will trust in you. When I was invited to be a part of the project and the role of moderator, I really, really wasn't sure what all I was saying yes to. Um, but as I've gone through this year being part of it, it has so surprised me because I find it still forming my own leadership. The team that I work with has become a team, like a learning group for me, a, a, a group of peers where we're learning together as well with the cohort. Like it's very reciprocal, the way that the cohort works with the team coming alongside. We're having to grow in ways ourselves that we're asking them to grow in. And we can't just teach them and say, this is what you do, like we're the experts, because we're really not, we're all still in our own lifelong learning journey into leadership and and learning the practices that can help us grow through tough times as well as the good times. And so for me, it has just been amazing and I would recommend it to any leader. Is that good?